Hey everyone, sorry it's been a decent amount of time since my last video. I'll explain in more detail why I was gone for so long if you stick around until the end of this video, but I figure we should pick up right where we left off and get right back into some more Pac-Man guides. Today, I'm going to be going over arguably Pac-Man's most infamous bonus route, the Bell. Bell has gained a bit of a reputation as one of the deadliest ways to secure kills in all of Smash Ultimate, and it's a tool that everyone should be afraid of when fighting Pac-Man. However, if you're not able to use Bell to its full potential as a Pac player, you're going to be missing out on getting a lot of efficient kills as well as information on your opponent's habits. In this video, I'm going to go over the properties of Bell as well as how to use it and how to adapt once your opponent starts playing around it. First things first, as is often tradition in these guides, I'm going to be doing a bit of an information dump on how Bell works before we get into how to actually kill people at 60 with it. Bell is a seventh projectile that charges from bonus fruit and it generates on frame 112 from the start of the bonus fruit charge. This means that provided you have space, you can charge up to a Bell and throw it in just under two seconds. Keep in mind, however, throwing Bell out of a charge takes an additional 19 frames and can be caught after. I have a whole other video on fruit recycling and the differences of throwing fruit from your hand that I'll link here, but as a really short summary, throwing bonus fruit from your hand is much faster at 8 frames and can be done directly out of shield, meaning recatching bell is often the way to go if you want to get efficient kills with it. You're also left way less vulnerable when you throw it from your hand since you only experience 18 frames of end lag, whereas if you throw it directly from charge you sit through 31 frames. No matter whether you throw it from your hand or from the charge state, Bell behaves the same way when it's thrown. It goes diagonally upward and then falls down after a bit of time. This trajectory, combined with how long Bell lasts for, makes it a really strong trapping tool and great at calling out jumps. Bell is active for either 100 frames after it's thrown or once it touches the ground after bouncing twice as seen here, whichever comes first. As a pack player, it's important to get really familiar with the timing of how long Bell lasts for, as sometimes you're going to need to wait that full time to safely catch it. It's worth noting too that since Bell is an item, it will beat out most other projectiles, however hitting it with an attack or disjoint will beat it out and deactivate the hitbox. Alright, now that we've gotten the properties out of the way, the next important thing to cover is what happens when Bell actually hits someone. Bell is a stun move and will leave your opponent unable to move for a set amount of time if it hits them, allowing you to follow up with other attacks. What's interesting about stun moves in Ultimate is that they actually stun all characters for the exact same amount of time regardless of weight. The only things that can change how long someone is stunned for is their percentage and if they're crouching, which we'll get into later. On the screen right now is a graph that shows how many frames you'll be stunned by Bell for at each percent, ranging all the way from 42 frames at 0% and capping at 92 frames at 270%. A really important thing to keep in mind is that Pac-Man's forward smash, his strongest kill option, comes out on frame 16, so if you factor in the ed lag numbers from before you need 34 frames of stun to connect it from your hand at point blank range, or 57 frames if you throw it from the same position. The hitbox of Bell is also active nearly the entirety of when it's on screen, meaning if you set it down, people can still run into it and get stunned. Okay, so now that we understand how Bell functions, let's get into killing with it, and it's honestly quite simple. Confirming off of Bell is really easy, just throw it at your opponent and launch them with a smash attack. The difficult part is being able to get mileage off of it against players who know how to make it difficult for you to get it in your hand in the first place, and how to play around it once you do catch it. Lucky for you, that's why I'm here. The first step of killing with Bell is finding ways to get it into your hand, so let's go over that first. Bell is one of the easier fruits to recatch, however, oftentimes your opponent will not make it easy for you. The most basic way to catch Bell is to throw it, dash forward, and then press A to pick it up, but this can be hard if your opponent isn't giving you space. It can still be risky to challenge a Bell throw since misspacing and accidentally getting hit can be deadly, but if your opponent has disjoints or rushes you down after throwing, you can get punished. Generally, if you can get your opponent off stage or somewhat far away from you, you can just throw it out and recatch it for free though. This works especially well for ledge trapping since throwing Bell at about this range from the ledge can be a decent ledge trap and gives you enough time to try to punish your opponent's ledge option before you pick it up. Another very useful trick that Sinji specifically does a lot is rolling and then catching Bell as a mix-up. You actually have enough time after rolling to pick up Bell, so if you think your opponent will try to swing at you while you're trying to catch it, you can roll by and recatch it after. Hydrant is also a really great way to cover yourself since if you hit Hydrant and then throw Bell at it, you have quite a bit of protection. But this also requires a bit of space to set up. Another thing to keep in mind is that there are tons of ways you can catch Bell, whether it's with tilts, aerials, or even just Z catching it, which lets you rethrow it instantly. Keep this in mind since if you're always catching Bell with an aerial, for example, your opponent can catch on and start punishing you out of shield for it. I personally like catching Bell with narrow lots since it's difficult to challenge and lets you drift back after. If you're really desperate for space too, you can actually throw Bell off stage and catch it there. For this to work, you have to be drifting forward, throw Bell with a B button, and then wait for it to drop and catch up with an aerial. 
All right, so now that you have Bell in your hand, it's time to actually get kills with it. Since the process of catching Bell takes a bit of time, it's really important to try to make the most out of it each time you get it and not just throw Bell when you think there's a chance it'll hit. Playing really passive and conservatively will go a long way with securing kills from personal experience, especially due to how well Bell functions as an out of shield punish tool. I'm sure everyone remembers how Diddy Kong's banana worked in Smash 4 and how at high percents it was scary to even touch his shield since he could throw it out of his hand so quickly and kill you. Pac-Man pretty much works the same way in this game, except he also has one of the strongest smash attacks in the game for basically no reason, and a way to combo out of it with a projectile that punishes anything less than negative 8 on shield. This is by far the best and easiest way to get kills with Bell, however good opponents likely aren't going to just hit your shield when you have it in your hand. There are a lot of different ways that people can play around Bell, whether it's to hold shield, jump, or just to play evasively generally, but thankfully for us, Pac-Man has a lot of tools to counter each of these options. One thing that's nearly as important as landing Bell is to keep track of what your opponent does when a threat of Bell exists, and more importantly, tracking what they do when you throw it. This helps you get punishes later in the game when you have to make reads on your opponent's behavior. Shielding, for example, is a pretty common way to counter Bell since you're limited to just your specials while you have it in your hand. As a result, a lot of opponents will continue to play at close range but very passively to punish you out of shield for throwing Bell. However, you can actually use fruit recycling to counter this. If you remember from my fruit recycle video, you can press the B button to return fruit to its charge state, then shield to put it away and go for a grab to punish shield. You can also throw Bell and then shield to punish an out of shield option if you expect it. Another decent mix up to punish out of shield responses to Bell is just hit them into it after you throw it. Often if your opponent sees that you miss Bell, they'll drop shield and play more aggressively. But since Bell is active for so long, you could actually still launch them into it with Nair or Fair, stun them and then follow up with an up smash. Similarly, Bell is also a really good anti-air punish Tool. So if your opponent is jumping around you a lot to make you think they're going to hit your shield, you can just throw Bell while they're rising and try to catch the jump and then follow up with an up smash or back air. This is a really good idea against characters who have really good aerial pressure tools but can't camp you out, like Ike for example. Ike's ground moves are all pretty punishable, so as a result he's going to be jumping around you a lot. And while there isn't much you can do to punish his aerials out of shield, you can often just catch his short hops with Bell due to its trajectory. Close quarter combat actually isn't the best way to play around Bell since it's very risky and you'll get way more off of guessing right and winning neutral than your opponent likely will. This means that sadly, the best way to counter Bell is to pretty much not interact with Pac-Man at all and play Campy. A lot of players won't resort to this if they play aggressive, but you have to get really creative when people start trying to outlame you. You can always try just running at them to close the gap, but if you're fighting a character like Zero Suit with good mobility, Mario with a spammable projectile, or Min Min with gigantic arms, this might be a little tricky. What you can do instead is just completely opt out of using Bell by either charging a key to break their zone, or just saving it for later and trying to get advantage without it. This is also why throwing Bell at the ledge is so good, unless your opponent has really good offstage stalling options, is going to be tricky for them to avoid the situation entirely. Oftentimes, the key to countering defensive play is just to play campier, and this is even more important when you factor in who has a percent lead. Bell is even stronger when Pac-Man has a lead, since your opponent really doesn't have a choice other than coming directly to you, but on the flip side, if you're playing from behind, you're often better off trying to find more explosive ways of getting kills rather than playing patiently with Bell. Another important thing to factor in is crouching, as I mentioned near the start of the video. Crouching actually significantly reduces the stun time of Bell, which seems like a pretty big deal, but actually it doesn't matter too much. Crouching reduces your mobility pretty significantly, since you have to stop a dash to do it and are still vulnerable to other attacks, so really it's honestly not much better than just shielding. This is actually a decent way to play around Bell if your character can crawl, since they have more ways to mix up their movement, but it's important to keep in mind that past 110%, Bell will stun crouch opponents for 35 frames, which is a perfect amount of time to follow up with a forward smash, assuming the best case scenario for them where they get hit by Bell, the frame it generated, while you're still stuck in end lag. This obviously doesn't factor in reaction time, but the percent range is usually enough to get you in the ballpark, since your opponent usually isn't going to get hit by Bell the moment it generates. Before we finish, I have a few more general tips with Bell. I said at the start of the video that Bell goes through the stage, which seems pretty impractical. However, if you have Bell off stage and need a way to recover safely, it's actually not a bad option to throw up from under the ledge because it pretty much blocks your opponent from standing at the ledge for a second or two. Also, I pretty much exclusively mentioned following up Bell with a forward smash, and that's because it's by far your best follow up. Up smash is very inconsistent due to how the first hit works with stun, so I'd advise not using it unless your opponent is stunned slightly above the ground and you know you can get only the ghost hitbox to connect. Down smash and pellet are both decent as well, but normally forward smash is always a better option, and if if your opponent is in the air where pallet would connect, it's usually better just to back air or try to recatch Bell if you can. It's worth noting too that if your opponent gets launched by Bell, they can't be stunned again until they touch the ground, so make sure you wait for the stun to reset. The last thing I want to note is that Bell is also really good for tech chasing. This doesn't come up super frequently since Pac-Man's best tool for forcing techs, his forward air, usually starts launching too high before Bell will kill. However, it can still be a really good tool for following up for tech chases. After a fair, throwing Bell and reacting to what your opponent does can put them in a really dangerous position since if they miss their tech, they'll be stunned. They either have to roll away and risk Bell landing on them on the way down, teching in place which puts them in a position where they'll either get stunned or you can hit them into Bell on its way down, or they roll away which you can read and punish 
manage yourself. If you land a jab lock at mid to high percents and have bell charged up, the optimal follow-up is to lock with two jabs, throw bell from your hand, and then charge off a forward smash, which can get you some super early kills. This is actually something I go for a lot when I need to make a comeback and get a kill early, since especially with rage, you can really surprise your opponent if they miss your tech at around 50 and die as a result. Bell also works great for covering platform techs too, since it covers a lot of space and most platforms are low enough to connect and up smash. Other than that, that's it. I hope you all enjoyed and hopefully you'll be able to improve your bell confirms from the tips I provided. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more guides. I know a lot of you are probably wondering why I haven't uploaded anything in two years and I figure I should probably explain why since I haven't really been very active. YouTube videos were always something I did for fun and I always believed that if I had to force myself to make content on a schedule rather than when I wanted to, they wouldn't come out nearly as well. Around June of 2019, I started to lose a bit of interest in the game and combined with the amount of time it takes to put together these videos, I never really felt motivated to make anything and wanted to spend more time to focus on school. I started making videos when I was really young, if you couldn't tell from how high my voice was in my first few videos, but now that I'm less busy with high school, I thought it would be a good time to get back into things, especially since COVID is dying down and I didn't really love playing the game online. The other reason I mentioned my age is because of the events that happened last summer with the scene as a whole, and while I don't want to get super into it and never experienced any sort of harassment in my local scene, as someone who wasn't an adult at that point, I really didn't feel great about associating with a scene where that was such a frequent problem, so I decided to dip for a while. After taking a long break and seeing all the messages and tweets about how much people miss my videos though, I decided I would try to come back for a bit. Hopefully I can maintain a more frequent upload schedule, but once again, I won't force myself to make content if I'm not enjoying it, and I hope you guys can understand that. That being said though, I hope you all enjoy the video, and I'll see you all next time.